Hi there, and thank you for watching this installment of the video series from SoaringMe.com on successful job interviewing. In this installment, we're going to cover uh, jobs in analytics. Now, um, analytics to me is one of those things that's um, almost under the radar. It wasn't too long ago that businesses were making their big strategic decision based on their gut feeling and, and um, you know, maybe a spreadsheet or two with a little bit of information, that sort of thing. But um, in the last five, 10 years especially, there has been um, this conversion. If you watch sports, you'll see now in the uh, TV broadcast, they talk about the probability of success and uh, the likelihood that someone's going to catch the ball or steal a base or you even see some of the uh, defensive players in baseball reposition because of the odds that the ball is going to be hit in that direction. Now, there's a lot to analytics from um, the technical side where they are developing software to collect data, store data, and basically spit out some reports to the guys who analyze that information to try to figure out trends and maybe the direction that the company should or shouldn't go. It's a lot. In this video, we're going to focus in on the technical side and help me sort all of that out is our expert, uh, Sean Collins. Sean, welcome. Hey, yep. how are you? I'm very good, I'm very good. Now. Um, Sean has over seven years recruiting experience, and uh, most of that, I believe, is in the technical field, but most recently, he's been managing a team of recruiters in uh, analytics. So in addition to uh, being involved in his recruiters screening candidates and interviewing them, he also talks directly to the hiring managers, the HR managers, and um, hears what they're looking for as well as uh, gets feedback in terms of uh, some of the mistakes candidates make in the interview. So um, again, welcome, Sean. Thank you very much for taking the time to do this. No, nope, not at all. My pleasure. So can we start just with a little bit of clarification in terms of the part of analytics that you uh, have experience in recruiting in? Yeah, it's, it's the analytics and getting the return on investment, right? So it's like you said with games, sports, right? You, you try to look for the best advantage on the probabilities of how that outcome can look if you analyze it correctly. And so that, that is applied just like to businesses. So that is the side of the industry that we're focused on with the data science piece is getting the ROI out of um, the analytics. So. Okay, so the types of positions that that would involve would be your data scientists, your business intelligence developers, yep. the guys that are putting together a software package to <laughs> collect that data. Exactly, exactly. And, and with that, you have data engineers in addition who kind of definitely work tandem, in tandem with data scientists. So it's not only analyzing the data, you have to prepare that data. And a lot of it's unstructured from, you know, several companies that are startups to mid-sized to even older companies like Oracle, where they've been using older databases for decades now and have to now structure it to put it into a lake of some sort, right? Then okay, it so the executive team just gets raw data. They're not quite sure what to make. No, exactly. Yeah, they never know what's going to be. So <laughs> surprise to them. Yeah. Okay, so let's, let's uh, try to focus in on um, entry level and then sort of mid-level career within these areas. Now, to me, entry level usually means maybe uh, fresh out of college or don't even need a college degree and it's your first job within a field. Yeah. Is, is that what you're dealing with? Yeah, a lot of times we do hire entry level folks. Um, sometimes we prefer them uh, in many instances for the hiring parts. And then, yeah, it's usually entry to mid-level, so. Okay, fantastic. Yeah. So, um, in my other videos, I talk about the fact that um, whether it be um, formalized or not, companies come up with, in their minds, this profile of who they think they want to hire. Mm -hmm. So can you give me a sense uh, on, on these positions that we talked about, the data engineers yeah. and, 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 and the scientists, the data scientists? What's the profile of, of somebody that would make a good candidate? 
Uh, you know, a good profile that we look for, you know, are ones that have status, stats, stats in their background, statistics. Um, you know, PhDs are kind of nicely uh, seen as attractive to us just because they have a lot of academic uh, experience in the background of looking at data and understanding it from a, a stats perspective. That goes really far in this industry. Uh, but on top of that, machine learning, right? That seems to be the, the transition nowadays from the, the pure science focus and research into turning it into more artificial intelligence. So the perfect profile, in our opinion, uh, would be uh, someone that has a stats background, statistics uh, with machine learning, right? Um, so applying those kind of techniques, developing algorithms, to get them into a, some sort of uh, intelligent solution is a data scientist background that we preferably uh, target in, in our space, so. Okay, yeah. so if, if I'm um, coming out of college, even without any work experience, then um, you're, you're really gonna want me to have some sort of statistics or, or um, some analytics related degree. Oh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah, but we've also hired folks with mathematics uh, majors that are entry level and that do quite well. Um, they've transitioned, maybe taken a, a Udemy course on data science, learning the fundamentals of programming in R or Python, and then they can learn and can be a quick study. We can wrap up more fast uh, than anybody else who doesn't have any analytics experience, right? Or having that math background is just good enough, no numbers uh, with an Udemy course of some sort can get you right into the industry, so. Okay, and so uh, for the folks that do have a little bit of experience, what, do, what are you generally looking for there? For those who have experience, we're looking for the, the business consulting piece, so those who can in, intelligently and coherently translate the data uh, to, to the lay, in layman's terms to the business uh, stakeholders, right? So not only are you gonna have to analyze that data, you need to also convey that in a, in a uh, logical and understand, understanding to, matter. To somebody who doesn't have a statistical PhD degree. Right, yeah. yeah so. Statistics, so, all right. Yeah. All right, so um, let's, if we can, just uh, move into the interviews because your, your, your team yeah. interviews people and as I mentioned, you hear some of the feedback and talk to some of the hiring managers. So um, let me just ask you common mistake. What, what would be a common mistake in your field <coughs> in an interview that yeah. would uh, take a good candidate and, and um, sort of derail them. Yeah, uh, you know, for the entry level uh, candidates, uh, over over uh, you know, fluffing their resume or putting the buzzwords in to say that they know and know how to uh, really well py Python program, right? Or or they're pretty really proficient in R and have done a lot of you know solutions in that kind of language, um, and then come to find out when they get tested, you know, live on the spot or do a whiteboarding exam, they bomb it, right? And so. Um, that seems to be the common mistake, where they come in thinking they know they know everything, and then they end up not really knowing as much as they thought they would or did. So that's the one you see common. Well, that brings up an actual um, additional question: What, what, if I'm entry level and um, imagine I'm much younger and coming right out of college? <laughs> yeah. What would I expect the interview to look like? More than just a sit-down conversation? I'm going to take a test, or what? What do I expect? Oh yeah, we definitely have to test their technical aptitude with their uh, the, the core skills that data, the data scientist role requires, right? So that's going to involve either it's an online assessment if we have like a, an urgent need, we'll have to rush through candidates, or if it's just at a casual pace where we're just looking to hire that right person, we'll do a phone screen technical screen to start, and it will be a, a like an online whiteboarding exam. Uh, where it's done live with that interviewer, or bring them in for an hour session to do a, a live actual whiteboard um, coding problem, right? So okay, so if I say I'm expert level at some some language, and uh, I I should know I'm going to be tested on that, and it yes. doesn't match. Totally yes, yes, <laughs> that's <a> guarantee. <laughs> yeah. Um, any any other common mistakes that people should be aware of? Yeah, yeah, I think sometimes they get really excited. Data science is a really I guess you could say quote unquote sexy title nowadays, right? So everybody wants to become one, but it takes a lot more than just having your resume out there with buzzwords in it or, you know, wanting that. It, 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 there's more to it. So uh, we also see uh, candidates thinking that, oh, I can, pi I can Python program, but the problem has to be done in R. Um, and they try to solve the problem in R program, right? Or programming in R and they, they just fluster and just fail miserably. And the interviewers are kind of, cringing right at the fact that they should just admit that they don't know R and then they can just you know flip the question and do it in Python right so it's not I think a lot of times we see people wanting to overperform and 
and, and should just, you know, admit what they're good at and admit what they're not good at and, you know, go from there. Because I would imagine some of your clients uh, are, are open to coaching and training in some areas, yes, yes. but once they are dishonest in the interview, they kind of blow it. Yeah, yeah, that happens, you know, that does happen, so. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, let me stick with the interview and, and um, yeah. ask you about uh, questions that candidates should ask uh, their potential employers. What are, what are some of the sort of things that uh, should be asked from a candidate's point of view? Oh, for sure. I think the number one question that should be asked and, and what we like to see from our candidates is, you know, what would, what would make them successful in their role? You know, that's a good one that our interviewers like to hear. So, you know, that definitely shows that they're trying and want to succeed in their position and make it a long-term career choice versus, hey, it's just a spot to fill, you know, so. Uh, so, so it makes me come across as I'm uh, thinking about how to be successful for you and, yeah. and I'm also coachable. Yeah, exactly, right. And then the, on top of that, you know, they make it, a, good questions are, what are the team dynamics like? What is my exact role within that team? How will it look like on day one? day 30, day 60, day 90, right? So. Okay. Again, sort of the same impression I'm giving. I'm thinking long-term. I'm, 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 I'm want to be part of the team. Yeah. All, yeah. All good uh, personality traits that they're, they're probably looking for. Yeah. Other good questions. I have, I have a lot, but I'll just keep it short, but some are like, what kind of, you know, technologies are, are we using right in, in house? Um, have we ever thought about using different types of skill sets or, or tools? Because that also shows that, I think you're very curious and you'd like to learn if you don't know a certain skill set or if you have some expertise that maybe we don't have in house, you want to bring that value into the team. So it's a good okay. one too. Yeah. Okay. Now, um, I, I'm curious, we talked about sort of mid level uh, yeah. candidates as well. Career path here, would it be um, strictly going into managing other data scientists or engineers or what? what would you expect them to get into as they advance? Well, yeah, if they're coming in mid-level as a, you know, yeah, mid-level data scientist, there's always two paths. There's the, the individual contributor where you can work your way up to a principal level data scientist, you know, where you're just that subject matter expert, or you, yeah, you can get into team leading, team leading or team management, become a director of data science eventually, right? Um, it's probably, if that's the route you want to go, you can go that route, so. Okay, and so or, uh, yeah. on, on the folks that are watching this to have a little bit of experience uh, in the field and want to advance their career, they're going to be evaluated not only on their technical expertise, um, which would be the same if they, if they became a principal, but yeah. also maybe their leadership skills in terms of uh, driving home deliverables in, yeah. in their projects. Exactly. Yeah. That does take leadership, right? So um, I definitely agree there. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fantastic. Um, let me just ask you, uh, what other suggestions you have for either entry level or um, these mid-level candidates that are, that are looking for these types of jobs? Yes, what I've seen that has helped a lot is if you even, you know, your entry level or your mid-level is coming in with some sort of case study or a research paper, if you're entry level, maybe an academic project that you did for a, um, um, gosh, what do you call those? You know, your, for your, it's your, your end of final, your thesis. Or like your thesis, yeah. uh, your thesis, your yeah. PhD, statistics degree. Right, yeah, uh, any level. So you bring that in and you can showcase that, highlight what you learned and what you came, out with, uh, came up with with your solution, whether it be in a PowerPoint presentation or a handout. And same goes for the, the mid-level candidates where they can, you know, barring any MBAs, they can talk about what they did work on and they can present that to the interviewer or interviewers in a group panel. And it does a lot in, in one sitting where you can showcase your communication skills, how presentable you are, um, your critical thinking skills, um, and, that, and that just speaks volumes uh, in the interview itself when you're in person, so. Okay, okay. So we're looking for something that demonstrates um, the, those qualities in terms of, of oh, yeah. um, being able to analyze data or, or, or solve problems, that sort of thing. Yeah, you know, I think it's a funny question to ask, uh, like the typical profile, because in the, in the industries that, you know, like the one I'm in is more management consulting, where if you were to be, become a data scientist at, say, Facebook or Amazon, you're probably just going to work with internal stakeholders and not so much with meeting with clients, right, and customers uh, in that sense. You don't have to present constantly. You know, it takes a different kind of mindset and profile. Um, 
if you were to go to the big box companies, if that makes sense. Yeah, because I would imagine the um, higher ups at Facebook or Google or whatever mm -hmm. would um, not need a lot of interpretation. No, yeah, or they have somebody in place of that data scientist who, the, in, like in tandem, they would work with, you know, that project manager who could present, you know, the results of his work versus the data scientist having to actually do that. You know, they have that option where in the consulting world, it's you're kind of a one man shop or you have a team of three, but you still have to do everything yourself for that. Client. Okay, so there, there'd be a lot more uh, personal interaction, yeah. even some persuasion skills that they're going to yeah. need. Pre-sales skills, yeah. yeah. Um, this is really why you want to go this route, um, mm -hmm. being able to articulate and, and, and make it easy to understand for yep. the executive team. Yep. All in all, at the end of the day, it's all about showcasing what you know and, 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 and showing how good are you are, how good you are at that and what value you bring, you know, to the team and or to the company. So if you can, it's, it's just like an interview, right? You can also sell to the interviewers <laughs> how good you are. So um, similar concept, I guess. So, yeah. No, fantastic. Uh, fantastic insight, Sean. Thank you very much for <laughs> kind of going through all that. Um, uh, again, I will ask uh, the viewers out there to share this video with their friends and their professional network. Thank you very much, Sean Collins, and um, good luck in your interviews, everybody, whether it be entry level or moving up within this industry. Thank you. Yes, good luck to you.